Utah Family Farm. I'm Christy. I'm me. That's RJ. All right. We're going to start today in the chapel, right? What shall we then say to these things? If God is for, before us, who should be against us? That's Romans 8, 31. It's been kind of one of those weeks, hasn't it, son? Yep. We think we get things under control and then bam. Right? <laughs> All right. So just remember, if he's for you, nobody can be against you. So it's all working for a better cause. We know it is. We know it is. Moving on in the barn stalls. Quit moving the camera. All right. So let's start with our first. We'll just go in succession. All the things that went wrong this week and then all the things that went right. Uh, Darf acted a dork. And don't put any more in your mouth because I want you to tell him what happened to Precious. Um, we turned Earth out because he was being a pain. Turned him and uh, Caballo. Caballo out, and he kept chasing him around. Like, then, like being very stud to him and just being mean, um, wanting to fight him. So we sorted him. And off. that honestly, that's normal when there's a little bit, right? Yeah. When you first turn a stud out, they do that <coughs> to get their pecking order. But Durf would not stop. So. We sorted Durf off and left him out in the pasture by himself. Um, left him out there for a while. Let him calm down. Let him calm Let down. Him be. And then I took another horse and went to pony him to the pasture so I could get on him. A younger horse. And he started chasing us. And it was Okay, kinda... let's back up. Let, you're getting a confused picture there. He was using Precious to pony Streak. Yes. And Durf was still in the pasture. And he was riding Precious... And streak around the outside of the pasture. It's, it's our exercise course. Yep. So he's riding them around, and here comes Durf, who starts chasing Streak. Correct. Yep. So what did you do? Um, for a while he just followed, so we just kept going, and then he started running up from behind and trying to assault fight Streak. <laughs> um, so I think, <coughs> and I decided that. If Durf was going to do that, I'd just push him around, keep him out in front of us, and just herd him around and get back towards the barn. So we was way off in the very far corner when we started. Just my luck. Um, so we started pushing him back towards the barn, and he went almost all the way back to the arena where there was a gate where I could get behind. And he decided he didn't want to go anymore, so he stopped and he started kicking. And, and he well, who did he kick? Precious. So. Yeah, he kicked Precious. Got him separated. Got everything where it should be. Um, there's been a decision made about Durf. We know that Lee wanted to leave him a stud and wanted to leave him um, for breeding. We don't think we're ever going to breed him. And I don't care what he makes. I don't think the stud fees are worth what our horses are going through right now. So, RJ, what has been decided? We're going to cut him. He's going to be gelded. Um, yes, he's a beautiful papered black showy show horse. But at this point, I don't care. He's hurting other horses. He's got too much energy. He, basically, he's a, he's being a stud horse, which I get. But we have too many here. We can't have that. And he's just not. Um, because he's a stud, we have to keep him penned up more than we like. But because he's a stud, he really needs to be out to use all that energy. But I've got more mares than I've got stud. Duds. If I had a whole herd, it'd be a different story, wouldn't it? So, mm -hmm. But I don't. And I don't plan on ever having... So, um, RJ convinced his dad that it was time. So, Durf will be being cut at some point. Um, right now. <laughs> Not this instant, right? Right. But in the next couple of months, look for that to happen. Alright. So, that was Durf. And precious, and then we had another little horse issue, right? Yep. What about what, what with whiskey? Tell her. Whiskey's saga. been. If you followed us along and you watch our podcast, you know about whiskey, and you know it's been an ongoing thing. You got her. Yep. She went lame. About forty-five days after I got her. <coughs> then she got better. Yep. Then she went right back in lame like a week later, so. She's been. We, she's been to the vet. Yeah. She's been. He can't find any physical reason for it, and 
a lady had suggested maybe chiropractic that. care. And I'll be honest with you guys, I've never been to a chiropractor. I used to think they were all just after my money because the next thing they say is, make another appointment, make another appointment, make another appointment. Mm -hmm. And I had only met one chiropractor, and he was an older gentleman. And these are his words, not mine. He said, if I do my job right, and you rest your body like I tell you to let it settle in right, you should not have a chronic chiropractic issue unless you need surgery. Correct? Mm -hmm. So, he says, it, at that point, that would be when you need to look for reasons why it keeps popping out. Um, it could be a, he said, if it's, like, we were talking about back, okay? And he says, if it keeps popping out, one of your discs are going, or you've herniated a disc, or whatever. He gave all these big things. And he says, when I do, and he was an older gentleman, he charged $25 to come align you. And if you did not rest for as long as he told you, and it varied by treatments, he didn't want to see you back. Because you're wasting his time. And he used to do it for $25. And everybody used to go to him and swear by him and follow his instructions perfectly. Um, and he told me, he says, if they're, they're done right. But every other chiropractic I have ever talked to is like, well, sometimes it takes more than one visit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and here he is saying, no, it doesn't. And I'm like, eh, I don't know. And I've got friends that go to the <clears throat> chiropractor religiously every week. I don't get it. So, I'm not a big fan of chiropractic care. Just saying. I, I just don't understand it. Don't use it. But, the vet said with everything he'd done, he could yep. find no reason. The next step would be? Chiropractor. Before. After that, we have to go and take her have a full <coughs> body x-ray, right? Yep. And then, from there, she goes to the big clinic. So, we're trying to sort it out. Uh -huh. So... I uh, talk, found a guy that two or three people had recommended. Uh, the vet recommended yeah. him too. Well, we found him, and then we called the vet and said, okay, we're going to take your advice. And, and this he is recommended who we using him. Yep. And then I talked to some other people that had nothing but nice things to say about him. They had never used him, but they'd heard lots of good things. Yep. So uh, I called him, made an appointment. Well, Jenny had actually used him. Yeah. Remember? Yeah. Her and Doc had actually used him. Yeah, and Doc had some used other him people for him again. Uh, had heard nothing but nice things to say about him, so we took the plunge. Yep. We paid the money. And mom thought she was getting. I made a joke about being a scam artist, and mom's face is like, uh huh, uh huh. The guy was really nice, and he understood <coughs> that we'd never used one. Didn't really, and I told him I personally never used one. I said I get up in the morning if something pops, I wiggle it and I go on. You know. I'm a very active person, and I don't think that things get too out of whack, I mean, if, as long as you're not overdoing. So, anyway, um, how did that go? Yeah. Okay, wake up. So. <laughs> okay, so what all did he do? Um, he, he hugged her. Yeah, basically, he and hugged he her. And he bent her this way and, and that way. Her. He and made her turn into a contortionist. And then he got up on this phone thing or box thing or whatever it is, and he stood up over her and he pushed, her back and, and, pushed and wiggled her. Yeah. And I had actually told him the story of the only chiropractor that I had ever really talked to, and he said he was absolutely right and that he didn't want to see her back. He wouldn't even talk to RJ. He said, for two weeks, she's going to continue to improve. And then, after that, if RJ has trouble, he can call him. But he really didn't think that, you know. He says, if she goes back to being, you know, like she is, then to call him. But he says, you're only going to see improvement. You're not going to have to come back and see me. Yep. So. All right. How's she doing? Good. That was Good. on? Friday. Friday. Yesterday she was running around and bucking. And this is Sunday. Yep. She so, doesn't normally buck. She no. just normally mopes around. Mopes just, around. And mm -hmm. so she's actually doing really well. <coughs> Alright. And then I took and let Hershey and Reba out of the barn again. Mm -hmm. How did it go this time? Better. Better. They didn't want to go back to it. Well, the first day they were okay. The second day they didn't want to go back. The first day Hershey actually started what? 
Uh, Taking her baby. Yes. Um, her, both the twins were with Hershey. When I turn Hershey out, Hershey tends to take one. And run away. And run away. So the little one stayed with me, and I was cleaning some pens out there, and I'm shoveling, and she's around my feet. Hair, man. People kill for head of hair like this. Take it off right here. Um, anyway, uh, he's realized he needs a haircut. So that's why he's interrupting my Hershey story. So she was running around, the baby was, and I actually had put up a panel, knowing that she wasn't going to go out or go far, I put up a panel because Leighton used to do that last year with me, and Leighton tried to be in the barn, and then the two would get to squabbling, and so I kicked Leighton out and put up a panel so that she had to stay out. And uh, so, yeah, my siblings were <laughs> were fighting. And uh, at one point, the little panel that I put up had a little triangle between the door and it, and uh, Amethyst snuck out. What happened, Mr. Whatever... What I happened? My Stevie wasn't an impression. <laughs> Stop it. Um, what happened when she got on the other side and panicked? Hershey came back to her. Hershey came <laughs> running before I could even get to her. So I let her go with her. And now outside, she's not the best at keeping both with her. But she does keep most of the time both of them with yep. her. Right? You have to go out there. You'll listen and you'll hear them. And it'll be kind of funny because they'll you'll hear this bath and then it gets a little more panicked and a little more panicked you got to get into Hershey and tell her Hershey go get your baby and so yeah all right and then we also did what moved some animals around where are the calves at um <clears throat> let's see here the calves are over here in the yard stall yard stall yep how are they doing good good Murphy yeah. was in the yard stall, but we turned the goats and sheep loose to get them a little bit of green grass. We also turned them into the garden. How'd that go? Pretty great, except for your little goat named Leighton. <coughs> Leighton tries everything, like my herbs, my onions, the trees. Everything else put his head down and just grazed. Not Leighton. Well, so, and who had to sit guard of his straw? <laughs> I did. But... <laughs> Murphy's back over here on this side of the pasture, and she's back over there on there. It's supposed to rain. Yeah, it's so supposed to rain. And, everything and, where they have good shelters. Yep. We don't leave it up to them to have good shelter. No. All right. So is that all that's going on in the yard, in the barn stalls? Sounds about like it. I think so. Um, waiting on the grass and stuff to green up. Now, this year, we did not grain the cattle. No. We only hate them. And it's a method of grass-fed um, and they call it grass-fed beef, you know, blah, blah, blah. So we did not grain the cattle this year. And what have we noticed? They're thinner than what we like. They are thinner. And so if you're fattening beef-fed cat or grass-fed cattle, I don't know. Uh, I'm not liking that method. We probably will slim down the herd next winter and keep it where we can just grain them all. Um, our biggest thing is, is that our herd is pretty big this year, isn't it, through the winter? 20 head. Yep. 19, so, 20. and we were told, oh yeah, don't worry, you can grass feed them. I don't feed mine. We only do it on hay, blah, blah, blah. And I always think that their cattle look a little thin. Maybe mine do look a little fat. I don't know, but I like mine looking a little fat. <laughs> I don't like them looking thin. So, um, we are weaning the babies, right? Yep. We are, and this is something we normally don't do. And I now know why people do it if they're grass feeding. We have pulled all the babies and we are going to concentrate on cattle body score, meaning that we're going to get them up. We've taken their babies off, we're drying them up, and then their bodies won't be supporting too. So, um, little Miss Zebu, now she did okay. She's a little thinner looking, but she looks <coughs> the best out of the two moms. And the only ones that look bad are the two moms. So I can see why people calve in the spring, mm -hmm. pull the babies in the fall and force it, and then don't have anything on them in the winter. We have to decide if we're going to do that. I don't think we are because we have fall babies, correct? Mm -hmm. And we only have three. And we should be able to feed those three through the winter, right? Yep. We're just, I, I just can't see doing it. I, it's a method I don't agree with um i don't like the results let's put it that way so 
<laughs> All right. What else we got? Uh, mending fences. Come on. Oh, what? Mending fences. What'd you help me do last night? Um. Um. There was a three. We moved a feeder. Length hay feeder. Yep. In the pasture, and Layton, her little fat butt, had tried to stand on it and busted it. So last night we took it out of the pasture. Will you go let Hanky out? Took one length out of the pasture. Yeah, took one length of the three length hay feeder out. Took it out, took the parts, came in here, and made the calves a feeder. Um, so now this um, stall over here has that vertical type feeder. Murphy's got one in his stall. These have two out here, and these have this one has one. So um, we did that. Uh, I took a side off the calf shed. Why did I do that? Because it gets hot. It gets hot. It's well, and it's falling apart. It really needs that piece of wood is like particle board, and even though it's like painted and it had this silver stuff on it that was supposed to make it like waterproof, it's just flaking all apart and pulling away. And so I just took it down on one side. Yep. Um, so we have a two-sided shed for them. Just two-sided. Um, oh. I know it's gonna <laughs> fall over. Um, I hope the wind doesn't blow from the other way. I took the the wood off the chicken coop. I did not get the wood off of the calf shed, but in the winter we put up wood to off cover the, other the calf shed. windows. Yeah, the other calf shed off the windows, um, and it's just to break snow and ice and you know that kind of thing. It's not like sealed up tight, tight, is it? Oh yeah, we spent tubes of caulk on this thing. It's sealed up so super tight, a blizzard could go through it. Oh, blizzard take it down. Anyway, so I took, I unwinterized the chicken coop, did the calf shed over here, moved mm. that hay feeder. Um, mm. RJ, what did you get to do? What happened uh, on the way? Okay, so last week, if you followed the saga of the truck, uh, <laughs> you know that RJ replaced a gasket by taking off the fan belt and yes. the alternator, and he did an amazing job. I changed the thermostat for it. Then this Friday we went to the chiropractor and we get over there. We drove to Wagner, which we'll get to in the yarn in the yarn farm here in a minute. But we drove to Wagner and had it just seemed to heat up a little bit, but it was still full of water. We just didn't get it, so we went ahead and drove home, and we checked the water several times on the way, correct, and the oil, um, and it didn't ever get really up high. It just a little too high for the truck and mm. so when we stopped to check it and pick up something to eat on the way home we noticed a puddle of water underneath so we're looking and we're like, oh my gosh <coughs> we get home call the mechanic Joe he now has a job so he doesn't have time to come help me so he told RJ what to do and RJ what did you change on the truck the thermostat Yep. And how's the truck running now? Good. So, we think we're down to one small vacuum leak and an oil leak that nobody can find. Get those two things fixed, it'll be running like a charm, won't it? Yep. Okay, so, um, all right, let's move on into in the yarn farm. Number one, Thursday, we went to Wagner and we presented mm -hmm. where you would be without agriculture in your life. To the pre K, kindergarten, and first grade of the Wagner um, Elementary School. Now, it's the Eleanor something school, and I never can get it right, but it's down in Wagner, Oklahoma. Um, it's the only school in that town. Yes, pretty much. Uh, it went good. Um, apparently, the word naked is <coughs> age inappropriate according to a child in the first grade. And, yeah, <laughs> it was the only thing that I just kind of whizzed right over. We do think it's important to let kids know where their food, where their clothing, and how much their lives depend on agriculture. And our thing was is that, you know, houses are made of wood, wood come from trees, um, that kind of stuff. And that's all agriculture. And we tie it all to the farmer. And I start out by telling them that I'm going to teach them a big word, agriculture. And basically, anything a farmer does is agriculture, whether it be animals or plants. Stop it. Whether it's animals or plants. And um, 
we talked to them about, uh, what all do we talk to them about? Their food. You know, we know that they garden and, and you know, they know their food comes from plants. And the farmer does the plants and the farmer does agriculture. And then we tie back and we talk about our clothes. And in the end, I tell people that you'd be homeless, hungry, and naked. And it makes it stick with the kids. Well, apparently the word naked is inappropriate. And I said, no, we really think it's important that you know where your clothes come from. So, anyway, why are you taking my pen apart? It doesn't right now. Anyway, it does. so we, um, there was a farmer's insurance that had a, a, that sponsored us. They were amazing. And she actually did some copies for us, provided us with a bottle. Mary was super, super sweet. Um, we loved it. It was fun, huh? Um, it's the first time that we've done a presentation like that. We normally go into a classroom and do it per teacher. And this was an assembly. What did you lose? What did you lose? A thingy to do okay. It's the spring, so now he's not going to be able to put my pen back together. Great. Hang on. I'll find it, folks. Ah, me. Oh, that was something I didn't tell you all about either. Okay. Um. Uh, Anyway, get back up here. You can find it later. Come on. So we did that. We did that. And then um, it was just amazing. But the kids. And we even tell them like. Um, Will you stop? You Look at my class minister. Uh-huh. Okay. <coughs> anyway, we had that going on. The truck did great coming home. Uh, not great, but okay. Um, and then also. This last, what's it say? Help me quit. <laughs> Torn. Okay, then I also went and recorded my Tinker Garden video and submitted it. So we might be able to bring that program out to the farm if I get certified right. I started advertising Spring on the Farm. Now, I did have, and we're still debating, I'm still debating it. You guys know that we don't like to put out anything truly negative, right? Um, quit. Doesn't Son. work right. Okay, because you lost the spring. Stop it and talk to these people. Okay, you ready? Gather yourself. Okay. So, we found a grant that we actually could apply for. And a lot of them, we're not allowed to apply for because we're not a 501c3. Right? And in order to be a 501c3, um, you have to have a board. And if we have a board, I've actually been a part of a 5013C before. It takes too much to decide what animals are coming and going. You have to have an, a vote. and I don't want to answer to that. I am all about the animal. I want to do what's in the best interest of the animal. I don't want a board of seven questioning what I'm doing, why I'm doing it, how I'm doing it. I have a lot of experience doing it, and I do the best we can with what we have, period. Um... The other thing is, is it leads to a lot of drama because you have seven volunteers. You don't pay them anything. Um, and they sit on your board and make decisions about your farm. I, I just can't. Um, like I said, I did it. I lived it. I got myself into a tight spot because of the way the law was written. And if something had happened in that instance, I could have lost this farm. So I resigned. I just quit. I quit fighting with them. I removed the drama from my life, and I quit. Um, which I bawled. I, I loved that that job. I loved that position, and I was really super upset. So you have a little head bump. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Will you stop it? Anyway, so we won't do the five hundred one C three because <clears throat> we just cannot. I won't handle that. Um, I want to be able to just do what needs to be done when animals come in. I want to be able to say, yes, we have room for that one. No, we have to don't have room for that one. I can take this one. We can't financially support this one. Blah, blah, blah. Um, the other thing that we do is our um, yarn. And because we do both of them on the same thing, you just lost another piece. No, there's a piece stuck. Okay, it's a good thing it's a little 
Uh, this is a fiber energy products wood pellet. <laughs> we don't need wood pellets. We can call them. No, if the bin don't work, because I throw them away. <laughs> Alrighty, let's see how far. Anyway, I can back to the grant. One of the requirements of this grant is it's a social media grant, um, meaning not that we use it for social media. Meaning, we can apply for this grant to process all the fiber that we have stored here um, and get our inventory up. Okay. Mm -hmm. That means we would always have inventory on hand. We'd be ahead of the processing. But their criteria is you have to write a post about why you don't have your inventory up. Well, ours happened and we sent our wool and fiber to a mill, which made some very big mistakes. And I still have product I'm unable to sell, correct? I'm going to weave one into a rug and see if I can do it that way. And it's been sitting here for years. It's not that we haven't tried to sell it. No one will buy it because it's done wrong. Um, not having much luck. So, if I apply for the grant, I have to put out um, on social media the reason why we don't have our inventory up and how we plan to overcome it with this money. Which would be great and amazing because then we would have more inventory and we'd have a, a steadier stream of income coming from our online stuff. It would be awesome. But I don't like air and dirty laundry on the internet. I, I just don't. Correct? Correct. Right. So, I mean, I understand why they want to know. They want to make sure that you're not just being you know, uh, not business minded. They want to make sure you're business minded and that there's a reason, a tangible reason that is a correctable reason with their money. So we're debating that. If you have any idea on yay, nay, say so in the comments. Um, tell us the good, the bad, and the ugly of doing that. Um, and so that we can put a value on it, it's a $10,000 grant, correct? Now there's two pieces. <laughs> Great. We're talking finances and he's off. So anyway, that we're going to end the yarn money, farm Mom. on that note. Mm -hmm. Just know that there's it's a large amount of money. Um, it would do all the fiber we have here plus the spring shearing and we would have a ton on hand. I would have enough to get all the stuff I need to have large quantities of soap on hand. Um, all that kind of stuff. Ooh, so That sounded good. Anyway, will you stop? Moving on, in the field, you had to protect your strawberries, right? Yep. Okay. Um, we put out some seeds, some marigold seeds. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I just sprinkled them on the thing. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. They're self-sowing, so I'm pretty uh, sure uh, that... Uh. I took them from the freezer, and I put them out, so I'm pretty sure that they can handle the weather. Um... What does that say? Move the what? Paw. Hey, we can't read our own writing. We made a list because we had so much this time instead of just a short one. Mm -hmm. um, Pavers? Probably. That's probably it. We did, we're in the process of taking out the old walkway that went from the gate out into the pasture because that spot flooded. Now we can walk around because the fence is all gone. So I'm moving the pavers down to the garden, right? Yep. Okay. And what did you find on the right of way that's going to be in the garden? Uh, <clears throat> these thingy majiggers. Some kind of metal flashing ovals. They're like this and they're open in the center. And the metal isn't sharp. I've already checked that. But they're not solid. They like have a lip over them. So, I'm going to link them together and make them what? Flower beds. Chain link and then plant flowers in them and make just like a little border out of them. And there's enough of them that I think we're going to give some to the community garden. Trista asked me to um, see about getting them up there. Uh, we turned the animals into the garden, right? Yeah. And you had to protect your strawberries. The only thing we really have coming up out there is the onions, uh -huh. correct? Well, had late and eat them all. 
is she did not eat them all. She did eat tops off of them, which I don't know why she'd eat onions. There's tons of green grass out there. And then she got Maybe into my herbs onion. too, which my herbs are still dry. They're not like perked up green, so. Maybe she just likes onion, Mom. People like it. I don't know why, though. I don't like it. But... I don't know. All right, in the farmhouse. Yep. Most of that's you. I've been just doing whatever. Well, I uh, bought a truck this week. Whoa! What yep. kind of truck? Explain that to them. Okay, Miss Dramatic. Okay, it's a brand new. No. It's brand new to us. Okay. <laughs> it starts without a key. It's a brand new, new. from 1996. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> F-250 that used to be a what? Fire truck. <laughs> so. Okay, so how did you buy this? Did you just go up to them and ask them to buy it? No, they did a sealed bid, and I put in a little it's bit. It's got decent tires on it. They're yep. older, but they don't have a whole lot of hours on them. They're like uh, six months old. Well, two are six months old and one, two are a year old. Less than a year old. Yeah. So. So. Um, but they do tend to stay in one position because it's a fire truck. Now, what's wrong with it, and why aren't you driving it already? Um, it's not street legal. And why not? Because it doesn't have a bed or tail lights or... The gas tank is exposed. Okay. Um, and that's one of the things that, you know, you have to have something over it. So. Uh, and it doesn't I'll have a bumper. It. it doesn't have a bumper to have lights on it either. Yeah. So, um, and what it is bed. is they put the fire truck big thing on it. They so put a they, flat bed over it. Yeah, at, with all their equipment on it, and they just cut off the old bed. They gave him the old bed, which isn't very good. No, but you could sell it on Craigslist to do what for somebody to make like a trailer out of. Mm -hmm. Correct. So, yeah. Um, there's always people looking for those. Yeah, I found one that's. You find a flat bed. Yeah, I found one that's cheap. So. And he's supposed to go and look at it and see. And then, let's see, Friday night you wrote, right? Yeah, not very good, but I did. Oh, 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 go get my thing that I finished while you were roping. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He didn't do very good roping. He did great last week. This week, not so much. I think it's just everything. We've had so much going on, um, just personally. Not anything we can't overcome. Hello, Romans 831. <laughs> Okay, it's not perfect, but I did finish the runner from Grandma. You got it backwards. Okay, so I finished the runner that I made out of the rest of Grandma's stuff, and I actually have a little bit of the gold left. I wish somebody had video me running through the house with this thing like a cape. And I didn't make any mistakes because I can see that the pattern on the back is perfect too. Now, the other mistake that I made, and you'll be able to see it when I hold this up here. RJ, hold up that side. Okay. I have one spot that I didn't get the tension right. It's it's good, 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 good. And then down here, hold it up. See over there? I think it, it's okay. that side over there. It kind of bubbles out. Right there. Not that. No. That's where the end of the thing is. Right here. It goes, I don't know if I just didn't get my tension. So this side is totally perfect. Look at that all the way down. Now, if you look at RJ's side, you give so me the messed up side. No, yes. you done, done, done the messed up side. But when you lay it on the floor, I'm good. Um, is it something I would sell? Probably not, because somebody would say, "Well, that's not perfectly straight." But it is what it is. I had fun doing it, and the loom is now empty, so it is time to get something back on the loom. Okay. Anything else in the farmhouse? RJ. Yeah. I don't know what oh, it is. Oh, wait. I forgot to... Okay, I set this aside. We talked about... We've been doing the advertising for our event on April 7th. This is in the farmhouse. And I got... Okay, but I have to back up. I got our first application for interns. Um, I had a young lady call me from Tulsa. She was supposed to be bringing hers down. And... Um, our little Ashley has reapplied, and she wanted to make sure she got hers in before anybody else. So, um, she talked to me the other day and said, asked if anybody had turned hers in, and I said, no, but I got some calls from Tulsa, and they're supposed to come down on spring break, and she says, I'm going to have mine in before spring break. So, now, the, we have some super excited. RJ has been excited about this, like, all week. 
Okay, so I found this other YouTuber. And Bob won something for the first time in her life. I know. that. So, um, I will have to put her thing. In. It's oh, Elizabeth. It. I know, but I can't say her last name. Oh. It's her. How do you say that? Para? It's P-E-R-R-O-N. 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 And it's Elizabeth. And she's from Vancouver, British Columbia. And we got a package from her. Now, yeah, let got. me back up. I found her thing. All right, you guys know that I'm really, I don't keep up with a lot of people. Um, I do like things European because, um, or overseas, because I was raised over there. It kind of gives me, oh, I remember that, you know, kind of thing. Uh, this nostalgia factor. Um, but she had had a little contest for her 100 subscriber giveaway so if you guys are watching this go see uh, elizabeth's channel it's just everyday life she takes you along her thing and i am going to put this out there and elizabeth if you're watching you can correct me it's not been very evident but i think sometimes she's in a wheelchair or maybe all the time i'm not sure but what grabbed my attention is her cat and you guys know how i love animals so one of her her videos was a cat and so I clicked on it. Everybody loves a good cat video. And B is in most of her videos, unless she takes you out into Vancouver. Um, she took us on the Sky Rail, which here it would kind of be like a subway, but they have some that are overhead and not just under the ground. I don't know. We I'm from New York, magnets. okay? It's all, all right. underground. And so she um, had her 100 subscriber giveaway, and she was giving away what? Uh, a gift card. A gift card to Starbucks. I never win anything so I only comment to get the comments up okay and so she was she stated herself I'm kind of disappointed there wasn't more people that entered blah 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 she had one for Canada and one for the United States well I won the United States one honestly I was one of like I don't remember how many like just a few <laughs> so anyway I told her instead of doing the Starbucks thing because we really don't have a Starbucks here. I'd have to drive 30 minutes out of my way just to go find a Starbucks. And Starbucks isn't even in Kansas, which is where I do most of my shopping. So anyway, so I tell her to take the money she would have put on the Starbucks card and donate it to her shelter. Now she also volunteers at a shelter. So this woman is after my heart. Okay. I used to be a shelter director. She volunteers at the shelter. I love animals. She's got a cat. It's a channel that, no, I didn't think I'd ever find myself watching, but I constantly go back to see what she's up to. have no idea why. She's just one of those people. So, um, anyway, I got a package from her. And it's super cool. You got magnets? I did. Well, first off, I didn't expect it. And it says, for you folks from Elizabeth Peron or Peron... I'm going to say purr, like kitten, because she's got a cat, right? And we so, got a I call it. And it says tag. YouTube subscriber from Vancouver, um, British Columbia. And she sent us some things. She sent um, yeah. Yeah, a, a tag for Moose. We'll use that for him. And then um, she sent me a cat and a dog magnet for my fridge. So I will a have that. And a t-shirt. And it says, yes, I heard you. Now, if you look. That's a herding dog. It's, <laughs> I love it. It says, I heard you, like H-E-R-D. It's a play on words, and I love it. So, anyway, thank you, Elizabeth. I am super, super excited about this. You didn't have to, but we surely do appreciate it. We love it. Um, we are going to use this on Moose, our little pampered indoor dog. Reason being is because if I put this tag on the ones that roam free out on the farm, if it gets caught on the barbed wire, it could actually cause them an issue, correct? Yep. So I will tell you, anything that you do like this, use for house dogs, not outside dogs. We have a house dog. Um, you guys have all seen Moose. He's like a little nine pound mm -hmm. thing. Can't do anything. And he's our house Come dog. Here, he doesn't even go out potty by himself. Seriously. If you turn him loose, he, he's just... Ah. So um, he goes in the stall with the pig. He likes the pig, but that's it. But he's a house dog. He goes out, goes potty, comes right back in. We don't leave him out for any length of time. And he will be the one utilizing this. Um, so anyway, we were super excited to get Vancouver Mail. We love it. But it's not a channel I normally would find myself watching.
but for some reason I'm drawn back to her channel. So I think her and I have a lot in common. Um, she cooks. She does everything. She's married according to this tag. Now, I knew there was somebody with her. I didn't know who it was. I'm going to say it says Roy and Elizabeth. Heron. So I'm going to say probably a husband. I don't know. Um, she needs to do a question and answer session, doesn't she? So just tell us about herself. Because, like I said, I'm not sure that she's in a wheelchair. I don't know if I just haven't watched the right videos. I don't watch every one because I have limited time. But I do watch... The cat video. Any that, ha that I think have the cat in them. Um, if they have the little tag with the cat in them, I'm on it. And if there's something that is cool, like... Um, Okay, I watch all her food ones. She makes some food stuff. You guys know I love to eat. So I watch the food ones. It's the picture on her that keeps my attention. If there's something that comes up, and I find myself watching a lot of them, but I didn't go back. Um, I've only recently found her, and I did not go back and watch all the ones previous. So she may have a question and answer out there. I don't know. But she's a neat little lady. So, so close to, you know, work. volunteers at a shelter, has a little cat. And the cat's name is B. <laughs> I want to send her something like grass. She's got some plants out on the patio. And when we lived overseas, my mother would always plant grass. Because, of course, the cats didn't go outside there. We lived in an apartment in a high traffic area. And my mom would plant big plant just of grass. And they'd go out there and chew on them and that kind of stuff. She did say never to plant catnip. We lived on the third floor. The cat got drunk and fell off the balcony. We actually had that happen once. It was really sad. So, Cat survived. Cat was fine. I was like 12. Not the one that did it. But he uh, was eating catnip that we had out there. And he jumped after a bird. <laughs> They're cats. They're not going to rationalize it. <clears throat> and it was horrible. Huge bat bill. It was my sister's cat. She cried um, for good reason. Mm -hmm. um, after that, mom went to just planting um, grass. grass. She never again would plant catnip out there. I guess it just, yeah. It, his name was Silly. Short for <laughs> Sylvester. He was a tuxedo black and white cat just like Sylvester. So it was, it, The cat survived. Lived to be like... 18 or 19 years old, but um, he did have a broke hip and had to be in the vet's office for a while. So we don't say plant catnip if you live on a balcony, but definitely some grass, right? Mm. Yep. Something for them to play in and roll in. And most of the time the cats just get up there and lay in it. They just liked it. So, all right. Anything in off to market? I didn't mention my wound. Nope. All right. We're done, folks. See you later. I will mention my wound. Nah, you're not dying. Oh, what's your heart? <coughs> but I'm limping. They might notice in the other videos. Okay. Mom got headbutted yesterday in the store. It's over. Who headbutted me and where did she headbutt me? Reba headbutted mom right in the booty. Just boom, I right there. Not. Flattened her out right in the middle of the pasture. <laughs> flat as a pancake. I did not. Ran her right over. She headbutted me in the knee. Santa Claus got run over mm -hmm. by a... Sheep. <laughs> it's mama. Her grandma got run over. Oh, grandma got run over. I'm not a grandma. Sheep. No. But anyway, she did headbutt my knee, so I'm a little limp in there. But anything else? Nope. Not really? That's it. I think we're going to get off here and post this. Remember to check out Elizabeth's channel. I will put a link down below um, so that you can just click on it and go to her channel. Make sure you check out B. Her cat is, it's a uh, minx. It's a black minx. Oh, really? Yes, it is. It doesn't have a tail. See? So, anyway, check her out. Elizabeth, we love it. We thank you. It's amazing. I'm super excited. Yeah, and I so love the shirt with the I Heard You. It fits our farm so well. Peace out, Girl Scout. See you guys later. Bye. Bye. It's still running.